Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Not, doesn't, didn't expect to talk about this one, but there is, turns out there was a third summon banner for part, <laughs> for Halloween. So I'm gonna talk about the three units that uh, got announced today, and then funny enough, by the time you hear this video, you can already summon on Mordred, and if you did summon on her, feel free to tell me how you end up doing. Um... I don't fully... So there's some weirdness going around here because I just realized Mordred I think was supposed to be a part of the APOC banner but now I'm not 100% sure if we're gonna get that APOC banner. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I guess I can show it off real quick. Um, do, 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 do. So easy to do. Uh, do, 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 do. Go here, go to October. Yeah, the APOC Blu-ray disc. I'm pretty sure she was supposed to be on it. Or maybe I'm crazy and she was never on it? She was not on it, so never mind. Where the hell is this banner? <laughs> I, <laughs> that's the main thing here, is that I actually thought that they would probably be... I wasn't expecting this because I was expecting APOC. I saw that they didn't have any changes to the Halloween banner, so I figured, oh, okay. So that means that they're likely just going to go APOC next. But no, they decided not to. They decided to go this way. So, who's on this banner? We have Mordred, Saber, AoE, we have Li Xuen in his assassin form, and we have, uh, I was about to uh, call her something else, Shirazade, or Caster of the Nightless City if you have not finished uh, uh, Agartha at all. That is what she goes by. And this is going to be just like the other Halloween banner where they'll have pickup days from the 19th to 20th and the 21st, that's Mordred, and then starting on the 21st, that's where Sherzade shows up. The 22nd and the 23rd, boom, and then starting from the 23rd, that's when you get Old Man Li Shu Wen, and that goes up until the 25th. And yeah, it's a very basic summon banner from there. It has the Halloween CEs, and now, yep, same ones right here. Let's actually go into what the units do themselves. We'll start with Mordred, because she's here right now. Um, I should say only one of these is limited, and I think it's story locked and it's Li Shu Wen. The other two are not limited and can be gotten with an SSR ticket later down the road when, whenever we get the next one. <laughs> or just randomly they can show up for you. So something to kind of keep in mind when it comes with these. But Mordred, she is a uh, saber unit with one quick, two arts, two buster. Her first active skill is the Knight of the Crimson Thunder A+, which is an increase of own buster performance for three times for three times three turns. An increase of own crit damage of buster cards for three turns. Increases on attack for three turns. And that's a 50% up buster crit damage, 30% and attack up is 20%, and that's a cooldown of five. And her mana burst, if you do not have it. I think this is what we currently have. I don't think we have her second strengthening in game yet. I can actually check by just looking here. When was this released? Yes, we should have this then. Because this was, yeah, we have this already. So, yeah, a much better version than this one. <laughs> by a large margin. That's huge. Second skill. Uh, Cigarette Lion B+. Uh, Cigarette Lion B Plus is an increase against crit star store absorption of Buster cards for one turn. Increase crit damage for three times three turns. Gain crit stars 500%. Crit damage is 50%, and the star is 15, and the cooldown is a five. And if you're wondering what Instinct did before this, it was just simply four stars. This is also a cooldown of five, like I said beforehand. Our third skill is the Secret of the Pedigree Helm of the Hidden in Infidelity EX, which has not been strengthened. It inc uh, removes her debuffs, increases own defense for one turn, and then charges own MP gauge. Uh, defense up is 50%, and it's a 30% MP charger with a cooldown of 6. The magic resistance is B, the writing is B, those are the passive skills. I don't know why I said it's so weird, that's the first time I said it that way. Third skill is an anti-saber attack damage aptitude, so in case when she goes against saber, she can immediately start fighting saber. And her noble phantasm is the Clarent Blood Arthur, the rebellion against my beautiful father. It is A+, plus, uh, buster rank, anti-army, 5 hits, this doesn't matter for buster. Deal damage to all enemies. The damage is 400% at MP level 1 and 600% at level 5. Deals extra damage to Arthur enemies and then charges on MP gauge. The bonus against Arthur's is 180% and goes all the way to 220%. And no, it goes 180% 180% at charge level 1. At charge level 5, it's 220%. And then the MP gain is 20%. 
with it being 40% at the final charge level. And in terms of Arthur, that should be pretty clear what those Arthurs are. Though I would regular. Uh, why don't you just call it? I guess because it wouldn't be Saber Face. That's that's fair. There's a lot more Saber Faces than that. Uh, Arthur, sure. Anything that could be considered an Arthur, she'll deal bonus damage too. And that's Mordred. Uh, I think Mordred is very solid. It's just a very good unit, actually. I think the only negative here is that uh, she's just not the same level as her father. Let me see if I can just quickly look at the Saber list. Um, because they're basically identical in every single way. <laughs> like, even down to, yeah, one quick, two arts, two buster, uh, the 18% attack here, that's different. The 50% for, it's a single turn, but then she also changes all her buster cards to buster for one turn, and then gives her MP damage. The third skill is an charge to MP gauge, and then getting crit starts, it's also 30% of 15. And the Excalibur here does the same amount of damage and then also charges the MP gauge. Uh, on paper, it looks like they are at, it would seem like Mordred is better, but this second skill right here, kind of being able to change all command cards to Buster, can come in really clutch in some, some specific nodes where it's like, oh yeah, I just need to very quickly, uh, I need to be able to three chain this and then Saber will immediately get all three of her command cards to be Buster and it feels rad. I think that's the only thing, but otherwise, it's literally like, if you're just using them for AoE purposes, both of them can work perfectly fine. Obviously, with Vich, um, it helps a whole bunch that she, get, that she gets back to 20%, and then also, um, it's funny because you can actually run her in multiple different kind of scenarios, because you could just keep it with this, but then if you also use her with Morgan, uh, the overcharge effect will apply and you'll be able to get some MP back that way. Well, funny enough, I don't think you'd actually be able to take advantage of it if it's the last attack you do. But with Vich, it's perfectly fine, because the 20% you'll get that back, and then you're able to use the 30%, which will be basically like you had a 50% MP gauge start anyway, and you'll be perfectly fine. All the cooldowns are low, 6, 5, and 5 mean it's perfect, and yeah, if you're looking for a Saber AoE, I think typically people usually consider Saber to be the best one to do it, at least in NA. Actually, I don't know how... No, that's not true. The best one would be um, Muramasa. <laughs> but that's different. <laughs> Maybe it's not fair to compare people to Muramasa. His singular AoE attack does more damage than some people's single target, so maybe it's not actually a fair comparison. But we'll take it for Buster. He is technically Arts, even though his Arts doesn't- <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> He's an anomaly. I don't think it's really fair to compare any unit to him, because at that point, if every unit started to be compared to him, we'd have kind of an issue in the game. But anyway, what am I trying to say here? If you like Mordred, she's perfectly good. She's going to serve you perfectly well, and also... She has some great sprites, like this outfit and this outfit. Oh wait, did she? Did they not give her the uh, the butler outfit? That's a shame. But either way, that's Mordred. Hopefully someday they do add the butler outfit. Next, let's go to the next unit. Another unit. Actually, funny enough, I think all the units in this one are just good. I think the only issue here is that nobody has any Saint Quartz, and it's also kind of last minute. Uh, here's Sherazade. Sherzade, also known as the caster of the Nightly City, as I said beforehand. She is a caster with one quick, three arts, one buster. Her first skill is the Arabian Nights Storyteller EX. Uh, a chance to reduce one enemy's MP gauge by one, increase his own arts performance for one turn, and then charge his own MP gauge. The drain uh, chance down is 100%, the arts up is 30%, the MP up is 30%, and the cooldown is 6 our second skill is the Bed Chamber of Survival A+. Chance to charm all enemy, uh, all male enemies for one turn, and then increase own defense for two turns at 60% chance with a defense of being a 40%. The Counter Hero Tail EX is a grant self gut status for one time five turns. Grants party gut status for self one time two turns, and then reduce one king's enemy attack for one turn. Revives with 300, uh, 300%. 3,000 HP and 50% attack down for the kings, and the cooldown is of 6. Uh, her passive skills are Territory Creation A++. The third skill is a Anti-Berserker Attack Damage Aptitude, and the Noble Phantasm is a Rank EX uh, Alf Lalo Wa Lala 1001 Knights. Rank EX Anti-King hits 5 times, 
and it is Arts AoE. It increases on MP damage by 20% for one turn. This activates first, deals damage to all enemies, and then a 500% chance to reduce their debuff resistance by 50% for one time, three turns. The MP damage at level 1 is 600%, and all the way at level 5 it is 900%, and then she also deals extra damage to king enemies. If it <laughs> A charge level 1, it's 200% damage bonus against kings, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is 300%, and that's Sherazade. I absolutely love Sherazade. Um, me and my brother are pro Sherazade. We are a Sherazade free zone in which anyone may love her and treat her correctly. Uh, as a unit, she is fantastic. There's not a lot of use for people. A lot, I feel like a lot of people don't like AoE casters, but she's honestly one of the best ones out there. I've been able to easily grind anytime I've ever been able to use her and be like, oh yeah, I can just use Sherazade for this. It's been super easy, as obviously because she is arch, she works perfectly with um uh with castoria she has a funny third skill that actually lets her be able to fight king enemies during challenge quests because she can reduce her attack by 50 percent uh for the single turn and then she can give the party the entire party guts <laughs> and then also when you combine that with castoria you would actually be funny enough be able to win just because you're dealing so much damage to the kings at that point um it's a very silly way to win. I'm not saying it's the ideal way to win, but it is a way to win. <laughs> and it is 100% viable. Um, yeah, absolutely love Sherazade. Definitely worth having, definitely worth, worth using, and de definitely worth leveling up. And she also comes with one of the best interludes that I've had in the game. I think actually Archuna might have the best interlude, but she is second because it, they had to basically save her character after the the two sentences she said at the end of agartha made the entire japanese player base hate her and then they had to basically uh write dial it all back and be like listen i'm very sorry <laughs> it was a hell of a thing and a hell of a character rewrite and yeah i love sherazade and i think she's a very good unit she is not limited in any capacity so honestly the best way to probably get her is to hope for a free ssr uh in some way or form but if you're someone who absolutely loves arts teams, you want a good AoE caster for arts, then she's going to be your girl, and she will do fantastic at her job. I can guarantee you that. And like I said, I have zero complaints with my Sherazade. Absolutely love her. This is one of the rare instances where I can actually say through experience how good a caster unit is, <laughs> because I use her a whole bunch, and I still use her to this day, um, even with all the changes that have happened. Uh, next, we'll go for the final unit, Assassin. He's right here. I think this man, Lee Shuen, has the record for the worst time to show up in banners, because I feel like I would have him if he didn't have the worst track record in the world in terms of following up units that other people were excited about. <laughs> And he follows them up immediately, so it's almost impossible to save for him because he always follows a unit that typically is like, oh yeah, I was saving a whole bunch for them, and then Lee Shiwen showed up right afterwards. Anyway, Lee Shiwen, he's an assassin. One quick, two arts, two buster. First skill, the Chinese martial arts by Quan, A++++. That's three pluses, my bet if I added an extra one. Ignores invincibility for a single turn, increases on crit damage for one turn. It's 100% crit damage up and a cooldown of five. Second skill is the Spear Boundary Zenith A-, grants self-evasion for one turn, increase on critical star absorption for one turn, gain crit stars, 500% absorption with stars 15 on the cooldown of 6. Third skill is the Intersection of the Yin Yang B, increase on attack for one turn, and further increase attack for three turns, and then grants self-debuff immunity for one turn. The first attack up, which lasts a single turn, is 30%, and the atta second attack up is 20%, and that is a cooldown of 6. His only passive skill is Veteran A+. His append skill for the third skill is an anti-lancer damage attack aptitude because he really hates his younger self. And his Noble Phantasm is a rank... Uh, noble Phantasm, the Wu Er Da, the No Second Strike, the anti-unit Noble Phantasm, hits exactly one time, deals damage to a single enemy, 150% chance to instant kill them. Uh, note here, instant kill always succeeds against mob enemies with 80% or higher death rate, basically bronze uh, rarity. 
and the using the school uniform level 10 can kill enemies with 50% death rate, basically silver rarity uh, units. Uh, his damage is 12,000 at MP level 1, and it's 18,000 at level 5. And then he reduces one enemy's defense for three turns, activates first, and then his char the charge is 20%. That's how much defense they lose at level 1. And at the final charge level, it is 40%. And then he also has a special outfit, which he just removes the glasses. And then another one where he looks like uh, the enemy in a Yakuza game. No, that's a second costume. <laughs> it still looks, he just, the, he removes the glasses. <laughs> that That's it. <laughs> And then the other last one, he puts on a big ass coat. Uh, he's really good. Uh, he does one thing, which is single target kill, and that's what he does fantastically. Um, I think he's he's still one of the top assassins when it comes to single target killing. Uh, he's not the best, at least on NA. On NA, I know the best is probably still Kama because Kama is ridiculous. But in NA, he pro he's probably up there with uh, King Asan and I think maybe Jack. Yeah, I would say yeah, Jack, because Jack was the best single target assassin until Kama came in and then completely changed the game for everything. And now she's just the de facto best one as far as NA is concerned. I'm not 100% sure on JP because I don't. To be fair, not a lot of people talk about single target assassins. <laughs> I think it's because, for the longest time, a lot of assassins were kind of bad, at least in the early parts of the game. We had dudes like Steno stinking up the joint, and to be fair to Lee Shuen, he has a mechanic that is typically very bad, which is instant kill. But it's a 150% chance to instant kill, and he's dealing like 12,000 damage, and even with having a a debuff on it because he is an assassin so assassins do less damage just naturally he still does a lot of damage and he's also just built to completely destroy an enemy in a single turn like his increase to attack 50 percent basically for that single turn um he's able to ignore invincibility if you have crit stars everywhere he's just doing 100 percent crit damage by himself <laughs> Just, here you go, I'm just gonna do that, and I'm just gonna take care of it. It actually feels like the Lancer version, just taken to a more extreme, um, to make him easier to kind of use. And he does give himself 15 crit, uh, 15 stars to help, to hopefully help him crit. It's not the most, but you know, during certain, certain team comps, you can definitely make up for it. Thankfully, when it comes to certain single target units, typically you use them in boss stages or something, so you could easily just, like, figure out a way to put in crit stars and make your way that way and yeah his cooldowns are easy it's six six turns five turns four, six turns the only negative i have is that the second skill the grant evasion on self is also tied to crit star absorption and gaining crit stars but being 100 honest it's not the biggest make or break it it's just kind of annoying if you need to use evasion and you miss out on the crit stars going to him but at least you can technically use it for anyone and yeah, those are the three banner units. All of them are different levels of good, but honestly, all of them are worth having and using. <laughs> now, I say that, but is it actually worth chasing? That's a different story. I think for at least Mordred and Sherezade, it's smarter to use a guaranteed uh, SSR ticket on them or something. Uh, I know most people usually end up using it on Tomomo or Waver, but if you have either one of them or you just simply don't care about or Tomomo and Waver <laughs> and you have other support units that can kind of help you out in there, or maybe you're someone living the no support life, you can easily pick up one of them and that's the one you kind of care for. It would be funny to be like, I hate Tomomo and I hate an arts team and then picking up Shirazade who is very much arts team focused. <laughs> this hypothetical person that I made up in my mind that does not exist. <laughs> but anyway, that is the banner for this time. Uh, we'll see. It, based off of the news that we got for Fago, I would assume the next thing actually coming, the next banner that actually release would be the return of Ibuki. And just because they've already kind of started the the high high the Heiko thing where you can get bonus stuff from that so that would mean that would mean that they're probably skipping apoc or maybe they're just saving apoc for thanksgiving where a lot of those units are going to show up i don't know it's kind of interesting we'll see uh na definitely doing some weird different things and 
that's good because we're going to be coming up into a pretty weird year. And as if they're willing to put in banners that were not in the original timeline, I sure hope that means they're willing to put up maybe a little bit more events because uh, it was a very much a the, it's a kind of a dead year. It's a, the next year is a lot of I can't wait for Lost Belt Seven. And then it shows up at the end of the year, and that's a full 12 month long wait <laughs> to get there. So, you know, we'll see. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, uh, you can leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It does help out the channel a whole bunch, and I appreciate it if you take the time to help. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, best of luck to you if you end up summoning. If you do end up summoning, feel free to tell me, even if it was just a single ticket, to see what, how to go. I'm actually kind of curious to see what, how, what are the percentage of people summoning on the like off kilter banners. I would assume it's not that high, just because most people are either saving or they're out of S Saint Quartz or something. But definitely for some of them, people like when they showed up, when Raiko, when Raiko showed up out of nowhere, I definitely summoned. So. Maybe there is just a certain percentage of people who just see a banner with units that were they weren't expecting and that they, and that they like, and they're like, well, now I gotta summon, because I wasn't expecting them. Well, but anyway, that's the end of the video. Peace out, everybody. Bye.